Welcome to our chapter on membranes. So membranes are going to be really important because they're going to determine what can come into the cell and what goes out of the cell. And also all the organelles that you just learned about, it also is going to be surrounding all of those. So it's really going to be important and we're going to talk about how it works and how it allows some things to come through and not others and that whole thing. Um, <clears throat> so if we look at what it's composed of, it's actually going to be this phospholipid bilayer. So each of these things, it looks like a little balloon with the two strings hanging down. That's a phospholipid. And bi means two layers, right? So it's two layers of phospholipids. And the way the phospholipids are set up, if you remember, the phosphite, ugh, phosphate head is going to be hydrophilic, which means it likes water. And then the tails, which are going to be the lipid part, are going to be nonpolar or hydrophobic. And so they are going to be as far away from the water as they can. So when you put phospholipids in water, they can set up like this. Um, and obviously, outside your cell is mostly water, and inside your cell is mostly water. Water. So that's why they kind of set up this way. So that's going to be really important when we talk about how things are going to get through or not. Um, all right, moving down. Phospholipids can also move around in the um, bilayer. And this picture here is showing you how they can move. So sometimes they can move horizontally, like or laterally, I should say, and look at how many times that happens, 10 to the 7th times per second. That's quite often. Flip-flopping, though, where you have one go from one side all the way to the other, that only happens about once per month. So that's going to be a little bit more rare as far as that happening. Okay, so remember when we talked about lipids before and we said that there were going to be unsaturated fats and saturated fats? So phospholipids are going to follow that same idea. So unsaturated phospholipids, think about that for a second, unsaturated, right? They are going to have a little kink in them, and so they are going to be part of membranes that are going to be more fluid. Whereas saturated phospholipids can stack really closely together, so they're going to have membranes that are going to be a little bit more rigid. And so if we look at this picture here, you can see some unsaturated phospholipids. Remember how they have that kink because they're unsaturated. And so that's going to have a more fluid membrane, whereas here with the saturated ones, they can stack really closely together, and so they're going to have a more rigid membrane. So when would this happen? Well, think about something that has kind of a soft feel to it, so like the inside of your cheek or something like that. That would probably have more unsaturated phospholipids. And then if you think about like bone or something like that that's a little bit more rigid, that would probably have more saturated saturated phospholipids in it. All right. So cholesterol. Cholesterol is going to be found in all of our membranes, and it's an extremely important component of it because it's going to help with the membrane fluidity stuff that we've been talking about. So cholesterol gets a bad rap, but it actually is pretty important. And so here you can actually see these little um, kind of honeycomb shapes here. Those are going to be cholesterols. And cholesterols are going to be kind of sticky. So they're going to keep the membrane together so it doesn't let it get too like loose. And the other thing they're going to do is they kind of have that kinked shape. So they're going to keep it from getting too rigid. So they kind of keep everything in that kind of medium sense. And so obviously, depending on what type of lipid you're looking at, some of them are going to have more cholesterol than others. And so that's going to be kind of how they work. All right. Proteins. So we're going to have proteins that are going to be floating around in the phospholipid bilayer. And some of them are going to be attached to the inside of the cell, and some of them are just floating around. Um, they're going to have a whole bunch of different functions, and I've got some pictures to kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So this is going to be the proteins, all these purple blobs that you see here. Now you know at this point that if we were really going to look at them, they would have that squiggly line, but this is just simplifying it for the drawing. And um, remember when we folded the, the proteins, how we had the hydrophobic parts away from the water. Same here, the hydrophobic parts of the protein are going to be in the center area where they're near the lipids, which are also hydrophobic. And then the hydrophilic parts of the proteins will be up on these other parts. So these are kind of floating through the membrane, and they are going to have a whole bunch of different functions. So the first function they're going to have is transport. So they're going to help molecules get from one side of the membrane to the other, or they're going to keep certain molecules out, depending on what we are talking about. 
Um, they can do enzymatic processes in the cell. So let's say that a cell has a chemical reaction that needs to happen. The, um, some of these membrane proteins can act like an enzyme and actually act like a catalyst for that um, process to happen. They can act as um, a signaler. So let's say that you've got um, a cell in your pancreas and it needs to get a signal that it's time to make insulin. So the signal is going to come in and click into this protein here and then it's going to transmit that signal to the inside of the cell so the cell can start to make insulin, right? So that's going to be how that works. Then cell-to-cell -cell recognition. So if you have cells that are trying to form a tissue and they all want to join up together, um, <clears throat> proteins can help with that process. So sometimes they'll have like little labels on them that'll say, I'm a bone cell or I'm a, you know, epithelial cell or whatever. And then intercellular joining kind of goes along with that. So if they do want to form a tissue, they can use those membrane proteins to attach to one another. And there's other stuff, obviously, but that, that helps. And then um, attachment to the cytoskeleton, cytoskeleton. So remember, we talked about that in the previous chapter, how there's all that stuff going on inside. And so that can just kind of help to keep the shape of the cell going. So those are going to be all the functions that these membrane proteins are going to have. So there are going to be anchored proteins and there's going to be free-floating proteins. So the anchored ones are obviously going to be attached to that cytoskeleton and they're not going anywhere. And then, it, just like it sounds, the free-floating ones are kind of, you know, bouncing around throughout the membrane. Okay, so right here, the structure of membrane proteins. There are membrane proteins called integral, and then there's peripheral. <clears throat> integral proteins are going to be ones that go from one side of the membrane to the other. And then um, peripheral proteins are just going to be along the inner edge of the cell membrane. So I'll show you a picture to show you what I'm talking about. So the integral proteins, the ones that go from one side to the other, um, they can have a couple of different functions. One of them is they are single pass anchors. Um, and so some of those are just kind of holding everything in place. And then you've got multi-pass cha channels, which are going to be like those ones that allow the uh, molecules to go from one side to the other. So they kind of help that process. They're like a little tunnel is how you can think of them. Um, and then the peripheral proteins are going to help to anchor some of those integral proteins. So <clears throat> here is a picture to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So these are going to be those transmembrane or integral proteins. See how they're going from one side of the